said, Behold, I'm going to send you a comforter. He will teach you all things. Holy Spirit, and many more. Before you can put something into words, it means that you've come to believe it. You've come to understand it. Then from out of understanding comes belief. Then when you believe it, you can put in the energy or the strength needed to you know, say it out loud. So confession comes from the place of faith. And it means making audible or pronouncing or declaring the things which you have believed or which you believe to be true. So that's what I, I understand the confession to be. Thank you, Salome. Thank you so much. That was so, so profound. You know, confession is just like Salome said. You take a promise of God. Mm -hmm. Just taking a promise of God while studying the word of God. Because the word, the Bible says in Colossians 3, let the word of God dwell in you, reach you in all this stuff. So you take the word of God, you believe it. You personalize and then you speak it out as often as possible concerning that situation at hand. So it's like an affirmation. Mm -hmm. You hold on to the confession of your faith by continually affirming. That means continually saying what you agreed on. Mm -hmm. Because it is based on the word of God. Yes. It is based on faith. Yes. So you, you continually say the confession of your mouth actually establishes the word in your heart. Yes, because you have believed in your heart, but you need to say it. So the confession of your mouth establishes the word in your mouth. I try to stress that. Now, every condition of life, the life you are living now, is the product of your spoken words. 
every condition in life is a product of yes. So whether it's negative or whether it's positive, the world you live in is determined by the words you speak. speak. You need to believe it. Some people don't want to believe that. Yes. But it's actually the truth. Because the sound from your mouth determines the things that happen in your life. That's the truth. And you know one thing? This is a very key principle in life. Because you know Salome, even to some unbelievers, it happens. Whatever they say. Yes. You have whatever you say. Yes. So it's a very key principle in life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And if you look at the beginning of the world, the creation of the world, and God said, Genesis 3, Genesis 1, 3, sorry, let there be light. Yes. And there was light. We were made to, if you read your Bible, you will see that what you have declared and in fact, the scripture has made us believe, let me put it like this, that there was no creation without God's. No creation. Hebrews 11, 3 says, through faith, we understand that the words were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So we already know that the Bible establishes that, and we know because we read it in the Bible. Now, this confession we are saying is so simple, but then, it has to come from the word in your heart, from what you believe in your heart. You don't just say it, you know. You say the same thing that God was said concerning that situation. And then you believe. If you don't believe and you are saying it, that's another kind of belief. No. You have to believe and then you say. Because you have to be convinced, you know, about what the word of God says. And then you confess it. When you confess it, you possess it. Yes. That's why they say it's key to possession. possession. You want to add to it. I just want to add that um, confession is important because it also helps to renew our minds. Because, you know, when last week we talked about levels of faith mm. or, or different kinds of faith. So another thing confession does, or why it is key, is because if your faith is at a certain level, and then you begin to confess. You find out that your faith begins to grow. Mm. Your faith begins to grow. So confession grows your faith or helps grow your faith. Mm. Confession affects your environment, mm. not just spiritually, mm. which is your mind, your mm. soul, but your physical environment. Mm. You've mentioned that confession, true confession, man was made. Mm. Everything that is today mm. was made through confession. Yeah, yeah it became true confession, yeah. yes. So true confession we create or recreate our environment to be what we desire to be. So confession is very key. The kinds of words you use, the way and manner you use it, is very key. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Solomon. Thank you so much. And we see it in Romans 10, 9. Even our salvation. It said, if thou shalt confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus. That is why when you are giving your life to Christ, the minister will say you confess, confess with your with mouth. Your then you believe in your heart that God raised him from mm. the dead, you shall be saved. Yes. Meaning the confession that Jesus is, God is the way to possess that eternal life. Mm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, this principle that we're saying now about salvation, you have to every area, mm. just like Salvation said, every area of your life. Every area of your life. Because heaven operates on faith filled mm. That's what happens. And hell to operate on fear filled words. So how what are you feeding your, mm. your, your life with? Your what life are you saying? Really. If God created the world by spoken word, then we should follow his example. Mm. Simple, I always tell people. If God is your father, what he does is what you should do. He's dearly mm. you. If he created the world by spoken word, then we should create mm. your life, whatever you want to happen in your life, by mm. spoken word. And the Bible says, be ye therefore followers of God as dead children. Are you a dead child? If you are a dead child, then follow the example of your father. Confession precedes possession. That's always this thing. What you confess is what you possess. Simple. Romans 4, 17, before calling those which speech be not as though they were. Confess it and you possess it. And you have to be careful as believers, as children of God. Because whatever you say is nasty. The Bible even says in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 2, it says you are snared mm, by the words of by your the mouth. Words of your mouth. Oh, yes. 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 You are taken by the words of your mouth. So you have to be careful mm. what you say. So the wrong use of words can actually endanger your life. Mm. Okay, let me put it away. The use of words, the right use of words can make you a wonder. Mm. 
W-O-N-D-E-R. And the wrong use of words can make you wonder in life. W-A-N-D-E-R. So you have to be careful. Really. Because you want you, 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 you want to possess that thing you have believed in your heart. We said it last week. Yes. You already saw the word concerning it. You have believed. Then you need to speak it. Speak it. No step must be missing. You speak and you act. You don't believe and you don't speak. Mm. You say it's in my mind. Mm. We'll not want that and you know that confession you. gives you strength to mm. act. Mm -hmm. By that yeah. you confess it. Mm -hmm. You confess. You receive, yeah. I don't know, there's some kind of strength that comes from your words. Yeah. I, I've observed that sometimes when I find it hard to pray, maybe when I'm tired of praying, when I'm tired and I don't feel like praying, mm. but once I start uttering the words, while there on the bed, I just suddenly I just gain strength. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. the physical strength, we're not just talking about spiritual strength. Mm -hmm. Physically you gain strength mm -hmm. to arise. Mm -hmm. So confession gives you strength. It gives your body, gives your spirit, your soul strength to be able to now act out, you know, in faith to get your desired goal or, or expectation. If you read yes. the Bible, you hear Jesus saying, see, 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 see. So once you if you want to create anything, you continuously say. Mm -hmm. Mark 11, 23, for example, say, For verily I say unto you, for verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, say, say it, say it, be thou removed and be cast into the sea, I shall not doubt in this heart. You see the correlation. You are saying it, you are believing it, you are not doubting. But you shall believe that that thing which he says, the things which he says shall come to pass. He didn't say, and that in which he believes. Mm. He said, and that in which he Jesus. says, Mark 11, 23, mm. please open it, shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he says. Do you know how many times Jesus used the word say then? Mm. About three times. That's it. Mm. So faith speaks your expectation, not your experiences. Faith speaks your expectation. Keep saying it. Keep saying what you expect. Your words must be in line with what you are praying for. Mm. That's what we Christians miss this again. You are praying for something. You are praying, oh, you are praying, 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 praying. Then you get that and say the mm. You are praying for the fruit of the womb. You are believing mm. God. You have confessed all the world. The fruit of the womb is his word. Children are the heritage of the Lord. You have said, none shall be barren. This is then you go outside there. And when somebody does this, it, I don't even know eh, why I am still like, you know, you just <laughs> negate everything you have said. When God's word is conceived in your heart, yeah. and then you have believed it, declare with your mouth. Mm. That is a spiritual force it creates. Yes. Yes. And that's why I say, heaven is moved by your faith filled words. Mm. Not by your emotions, not by crying. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So you create a spiritual force. And when you create that spiritual force, things begin to happen. Yes. So we are, we are saying that we should not speak con any contrary word or language, even in the face of challenges. Mm -hmm. Because every word spoken is a seed. Yes. Every word spoken is a seed that we shall need. So you have to be careful what you are declaring. You are already incubating it. You conceive, you incubate it, and then you need to speak it by declaring and you must speak positive words mm. because they have seen. In fact, there was a science of uh, a discovery mm. about two plants that were they were they were the two seeds that were planted or something, two beautiful plants. I want to get the, the particular thing right. And they said this particular plant, mm. they had two plants planted in two different plants. This particular plant, every morning the owner would go to the racing and see mm. sweet, sweet words and everything you go to you blossom and everything, and the plant will blossom. Mm. While they say the other one, they can speak in bad, bad words to it, mm. and the plant will strive. Mm. So there is power mm. in spoken words. Mm. Words are powerful. Mm. Every word spoken is a receipt, and I'm seeing the scriptures to back it up. But what I left is the mouth of a righteous man is a well of life. Mm. <laughs> a well of life. But violence covers the mouth of the wicked. So our mouth is the word of life. So life is in the mouth. Yes. 
Africa. Oh. Proverbs 12, 6, we say, but the mouth of the upright shall deliver them. He didn't say, but the heart of the upright. He said, the, the mouth, mouth of the upright shall deliver them. Proverbs 12, 14 says, a man shall be satisfied with good by the fruits of his mouth. Hmm. And Proverbs 18 21, which is our test scripture for tonight, says, Let our life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it mm. will eat its food. So our mouths are very important, it's not just for us to eat food. Yes. Our mouth is not just for us to eat food only mm -hmm. and drink, but it's that instrument, and it's a very important instrument. You have to praise God with it, you are praying with it, you are creating life by your spoken word, and you are building others up. Mm by your spoken yes. of words. So we have to be careful what we do. So today, know from today that this mouth that God has given mm -hmm. is an instrument of expressing what is in your heart. Mm -hmm. But as children of God, what is being expressed in your heart mm -hmm. also. Yes. Okay, in line with the Lord let Even the Ephesians 4.29 says, do not let any old soul talk come mm -hmm. out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Mm. Ephesians 4 29. Please go there and read the kind of the word. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. So it, it took me, it, this, this, this now is taking me to the next question that says, How do we engage in confession to possession? You know, you know why I ask this question? Salome is we can talk and talk and teach and teach. But there is one good thing about being practical mm. about things. Now, it is a practical aspect. How do we engage do we in engage? this thing we are doing? How do you confess to possess? Mm. What do you do? Mm. How do you go about it? Mm. You know, just for viewers to really, I, I'll say something so that you can pick it from there. Because I see that, you know, when we talk, when we teach, you know, when we listen to stuff, we listen and everything, and then people don't really know how to do these things. And say, I would have been confessing. All these things they are saying, they are doing this. Mm. Maybe you've been doing something wrong. Mm. And that's why you're not getting the desired yes, results. Yes. So, we're going to be explaining some things in this night. It's a practical aspect of what we have been saying. Yes. And there are three steps to this. Very simple. You know, it's about the, it's just very simple. It's like, it's like rules, like golden rules. Mm. But let's just look at the scripture. Mark 11, 24. Mark chapter 11, verse 24. Mark 11, 24, and it says, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Thank you, Salome. Salome, there are three important words in that scripture, as short as that scripture. Mm -hmm. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask, whatsoever things you ask, the first thing is ask. Mm -hmm. Desire. Number two, Yes, I, I think I'm reading from which which version is this? Desire. Second is free, which is ask. Okay. Yeah. What about things you desire? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ask I'm still reading. Yeah. Level twenty-four. Yes. 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 Ah, okay. Okay, this is NKJ. Okay. okay. But it's the same thing. Mm. Whatever you desire, ask. Ask. It's still, we're still saying the same mm. thing. What you desire is. Yes. And you so ask, ask for it through prayer. So uh, whatever things you ask, when you pray, so we have mm. ask. When you pray, underline the word pray. Mm. Underline mm. the word ask. ask. Believe mm. that you receive. Oh, underline sure. the word believe. Mm. And underline the word receive. Mm. Because that's where we miss it. Mm. And you will have them. You know, like I said, even the versions where it does not matter any version, mm. you will sit down, ask, yes. pray, believe, yes. and receive. Mm. And if you look at those two, three words, I mean, they are all verbs. Mm. They are action mm. words. They are doing words. Mm. So it's what we should do. Mm. <laughs> so you need to ask. Mm. Even the Bible says, ask. Is it Matthew 7, 7? And you shall receive. Shall receive yes. Ask. Asking is a vital part of prayer. 
asking is a better part. And so it is clear that in praying to God, we have to ask. Because somebody wants to ask me a question. He said, but Anna, you know, we're just because he said, Anna, when he went to pray in the temple, mm-hmm. that she was not, she was that only Christian to just a shout, 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 ask. That she was not asking, she was not uh, hoping, she was not saying anything, she was praying in her mind. I said, you read that. No, you know what I told the person? <laughs> I said you must have read a miss. I said because in First Samuel chapter one, from verse twelve to fifteen, she prayed silently, but her lips moved. How did the prophet know <laughs> that she was? I said she was you praying. know when we read the Bible, we don't read the word. Her lips were moving, yes. so you can't tell me that she was not asking. Anyway, let's leave that one aside. Now, you need to ask. Asking is a vital part, like I said. Mm-hmm. Now, asking requires an individual to open their mouth. Mm-hmm. I'm not being derogatory. I'm just saying, asking. Pardon me. To so utter words. Utter you words. Must utter words. Utter your yeah. words. Utter all your desires. You see, you, you see what? Do you know why I'm trying to mention? I'm trying to mention the word mouth mm-hmm. because we're talking about confessing yes. your, mouth. your mouth. That was yes. what we for. So asking requires that an individual. Mm, yeah. yes. instrument that speak and speak out. Mm. Words need to proceed from the individual's mm. mouth. Not just any word, but the word of promises mm. that God has shown you mm. in the Bible. Yes. The word, the primary word that God has told you. Mm. And it will correspond to your prayer request. That's it. So do you now see why we have to study the word of God? Because it says the word of God must dwell in us which words are bullet. We said last week for our prayers. So if you are praying for your finances or you are praying for fruitfulness, mm. then you look for that scripture in the Bible that talks mm. about it. Yes. And when you find that scripture, Jesus used the word ask. Ask. Mm. Ask using that word. In fact, in the Bible, in so many places, I don't know. Jesus used the word ask. We talked yes. about Matthew 7 7. Ask. We talked so about Matthew. Ask. I think Matthew. It's, it's a lot in Matthew and Mark. Matthew chapter 21 talks about something that, okay, uh, whatever things you ask in my name, I mean, believing, you will receive it. Whatever things you ask in prayer, believing, ask in prayer, ask in prayer. <coughs> then, Mark 11 24 that we are reading, look at what he said. Then John 14, 4 says, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. John 15, verse 7 says, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. So this ask, this word ask, is so, Jesus really, really, really emphasized on it, on asking, asking, asking. Luke 11 10 says, For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, the door is open. open. So, please, let's make sure that we are doing the correct thing God has told us. Ask. God does not just use words anyhow. When you see words like this being repeated in the Bible, it means it's very important to God, and you also should make it important to you, and you should line up. And do that that God is trying to tell us. We should pay extra attention to it. Yes. So what's the next thing that scripture says after asking? He said, believe. I mean, ask when you pray. So we have talked about asking in prayer. Now, believe. Please be as Mark 11, 24. Believe and follow. It. And please like and share so that others can join. You need to believe. Believe God for the answer. You know, this is what faith is all about. We discussed that last week, if you remember. We discussed faith last week. Believe. Faith is believing God for the answer to your prayers. Trusting God. Having confidence that God who says this will bring it to pass. That's what that your belief. That whatever is happening, even without seeing the physical evidence, you believe that God cannot lie. It will happen. 
You know God cannot lie. As believers, you know God cannot lie. Because the Bible says, now, we go further. If you look, like I started from where we were talking about salvation, we go further now. After you have believed, what do you do? What do you do after you believe? You need, you need to receive. You need to receive. But even before you receive, you need to speak the word. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get, I don't want to confuse. You need to speak the word because what does it say? When you believe in your heart and then if you confess with your mouth. So for the heart, I'm talking about Romans 10, to I'm going back to Romans 10, where we started from the salvation. For with the heart, one believes into righteousness and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Note that Paul repeatedly used the word mouth in relation to confession and heart in relation to belief. So after you have believed the word, you are not believing with your head, though. you are not believing with your senses, you are believing with your heart. Because it is true faith in God's word that you can believe. So when you have faith in God's word, that is when you can believe. So you keep believing. So you are believed. What's the next step? He said, receive. Believe that you receive them. So your your the number three step is for you to receive that word. You have asked, you have been. Now you receive the word. How do you receive? You want to ask me that question? It's through faith. It's still through faith. You see why faith is very important? The same way you believe is the same way you receive. So receiving requires you again to take God at his word. That is, I, I have received as as Christ. It is done. God has said it. He cannot lie. God is not a man that he should lie. He is a son of man that he should repent. Whatever he says, come to pass. So you receive the answers to your prayers by faith in what God says about that situation. That's the first thing. I remember, your faith will keep going. Come by hearing and hearing the word of God. So receiving means that what that you have settled it with your heart and you have received the answer. It is done. That's the two things. So you ask, you believe, and you receive. Now, after you have done these three steps, remember last time we talked about faith. What do you do? You act. You will be wondering, the confession is not here yet. Ah, don't worry. You are acting on it. I see your prayers have been answered. For example, you are believing God for healing. Even though you have seen the symptoms, you are acting, believing the word of God. That is said by your stripes, by his stripes you are healed. That's what he said. He said he has sent his word. So, because he has sent his word to us, we believe this word, that we are healed. And we are standing on that word. And then you act according to the answer prayer. You act that you are That's why you see when ministers are praying, they will say, now we begin to do what you cannot do yes, before. before. That means you are acting. You have are, you are received and you are acting. In, in other words, you are now changing your confession to past tense because it is already done. It is already done. You are holding fast that confession without any doubt. It is already done. And so you begin to, to confess now. That's the final proof. You begin to say, I'm healed. I'm strong. That's the final plan. That's why I said practically, your mm -hmm. sister is believing for him. He has asked in prayer, God, please heal me of this. And then she believed the word of God. She ran with the word of God. That by his stripes, I am healed. Jesus said, It's finished on the cross of Calvary. He has taken away my infirmity. Now I am healed. And I know I am healed. And you begin to declare the word to yourself. You begin to declare. Don't forget the spoken word. It's still confession. You begin to declare the word to yourself. And then you are healed. And you believe. Then you receive it. Because when people ask you, you say, I'm healed. Because you have believed that you are healed. Now, you keep confessing that word that you are healed. Even though you have not seen that physical manifestation. But you keep confessing. Because that's the final thing. Keep confessing. Act by confessing. You're, you keep confessing, I am healed. Even if it's promotion, you are acting. You are confessing that you are promoted. Yes, because your prayers have been answered. Because the Bible says, promotion comes from, from the east or west or south comes from above. I mean, so you keep confessing that you are promoted. You keep confessing that you are healed. Even when it doesn't seem like yes. it, you persevere. You keep saying, confessing the affirmative. Do not negate what yes. you believe. 
For example, if you have been believing God for a, for a promotion in your career or in, 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 uh, um, uh, on your job, you just keep saying, Ah, God has answered my prayer. I have my promotion. My promotion is secured in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for promoting me. I thank you, Lord, for elevating me. I praise and exalt you. Thank you, Father, for my testimony in short. Keep confessing. You need to hold fast to your confession till that promotion comes. Mm. You need to hold fast to your confession till that healing comes. Mm. That's when we believe us missing because we do not persevere. Mm. Because we're not, we're not just like you said. Mm. You know this persevering thing, we need to ask for it. Mm. <coughs> Maybe after two, three months, oh. you're tired. Oh, ah. Mm -mm. You know, say, ask until your joy is full. Oh. Ask until your, your joy is full. God's word never fails. Mm. It will never fail. It means that your joy will definitely be full. No matter how long it takes. Yes. His word is sure. His word is sure. You know, when you hold on to that word, you remember what he said? He said, my word will not go back to me or Until it has accomplish that which I send it to you. It shall not return to me for you. It will accomplish that which he has sent it to So you hold on to it. You hold on to it. God work always works. Heaven and earth may pass away. It will pass away. But his work will by no means pass away. That's what he tells us in Psalm 1. His work will by no means pass away. We keep confessing them. And it will come to that is the practical aspect of confessing. We have been given a mouth that will positively influence our destiny. And we have to do Praise God. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Why do we need to speak of God? Why do we need to speak of God? Um, you know, it's, people can see you and they may not necessarily know where you stand. I think speaking God's word is a way of identifying yourself or making you know where your allegiance lies. Hmm. And they said demons or the devil cannot, he's not a mind reader, cannot read your mind. Hmm. So it's like uh, you want to conduct deliverance and you are, <laughs> you are praying in your mind and voice and cast, you know, in your mind. You don't bind the devil in your mind. You cannot bind the devil your, with your, or through your mind. Hmm. So confession is a way of making your identity known. Mm. That is why before you, before you can be saved or before you are given the gift of salvation or you are stamped as okay, you are now saved, you must confess Jesus with your mouth. Mm. You cannot hide in your room and say, I believe, or you are, you are in the crowd. You don't want to come out and say it or you are standing. You don't want to open your mouth so that your neighbor will not know mm. that you are giving your life to Christ. You want to, no, no, no. You must come out. That means you must speak, speak up mm. so that between you know, light and dark, then they will know where you stand. Mm. Okay, this is where I stand. Mm. This is mm. my stand. This is where my allegiance is from now on. Mm. So confession is a way of making known where your allegiance lies. Mm. Making known who you are, what your identity is, or making known what you believe in. Mm. That is number one. Mm. Then confession in that same line is for spiritual warfare. Mm. And I mentioned deliverance. You cannot conduct deliverance in the mind. What's available oh, for the spirits? Uh -huh. They are available for the spirits. So because they will not hear you, they will still Abby. be there of afflicting you, afflicting your business, and you are there thinking about it or hoping, hoping when, for When Jesus wanted to raise Lazarus, yeah. you had to shout, you had to speak the word. You are word. there hoping for him, yes. looking at Jesus, or you are in the crowd, you know, in the church or fellowship, and you are hoping or wishing, you know, yeah. for, for, for deliverance. Mm -hmm. So you must speak yeah. up. And people that say, there are, um, some certain people that we shout too much, <laughs> It depends on how the thing is paining you. Mm -hmm. uh, if you like, keep quiet. <laughs> mm -hmm. and they, they say a closed mouth is a closed destiny. Mm -hmm. So maybe you don't really need that problem to go away. Mm -hmm. You can mumble it. So you know, it depends on how much <laughs> you mm -hmm. need it. Mm -hmm. But confession, depending on how desperate you are to get mm -hmm. what you want, yeah. confession is a, war, a tool for warfare. Is it true? Yeah, because last week we is mentioned it it, that your words, that's the word of God in your mm. mouth, gives wings mm. to it's your true. desire to happen. Yeah. You, we read it in the book of Mark eleven twenty four. Mm. It is by your confession that your desire now comes, becomes reality that you receive mm. from God. So confession is a tool for warfare. 
How do you even command spirits to go when you don't speak? And when you don't speak the word of God? Words are begging. So the Ooh. word of God, you need to speak it out. You need to speak it out. And yeah. speak it loudly. And speak and it seriously. And, uh, yeah. and keep sounding it, not yeah. just once. And you keep That's why you need to home. speak it well yeah. when you are doing deliverance. Mm. For the spirits will hear you yes. and obey your commands. Yes. That yes. is praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And words, why do we need to speak the word of God? Because God wants to have to it's like what the words of God transmit authority position. Mm, mm, yeah. yeah. Transmit authority position because when you read the book of Luke, when we're talking about Zechariah and the angel Gabriel, you know when you read that book, it wasn't God that made Zechariah dumb. It wasn't God. Don't have it. Because because of his love. But it wasn't it wasn't God. Yeah. It was the angel. Even in 1 Kings 17 verse 1, talking about Elijah, it wasn't God that said there shall be no dew or rain yeah. in this verse of three years. It was at Elijah's word. Mm. So that means what conveys authority, mm. especially when you know who you are in Christ. So as parents, whether you're biological or spiritual parents, we have authority position over our children mm. by the word we speak. Yes. And we need to be careful the word we utter over the lives of our yes. children. Yes. We have to be careful. Mm. Because mm. words convey, especially the word of God, authority mm. position. So we have to be careful. You need to speak the right words over your children. You need to speak the right words over the work of your hand. Mm. You need to speak the right words over even your spouse, over your own life. Mm. God has authority. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. So, why do we need to speak the word of God? Because people will say, ah, I just run around. I was confessing. Always do. They will say, this is different. But that is, there is power in the word of God. The word of God builds and it purifies. There is power in the word of God. That has built, in fact, there is no other way to build you up. First Corinthians 15 that three said something. KJ says, evil communications corrupt the mind. So you have to be careful, even of the people you surround yourself with. Because the words around you can build you up. They can dent you. The words you allow to your spirit can either purify you or, or dent your spirit. That's why you have to be careful about the music you listen to. You have to be careful about the movie you watch. All those ones. You have to be careful about the books you even read. Because the words you allow into your spirit matters. Mm -hmm. Is that that is beauty and purifying you? Or is dirty you and destroying you? Yes. So words are powerful. We need to speak the word of God. At all times. At all times. I stress it. At all times. Mm -hmm. And still on the spiritual yeah. aspects. It's just like people that visit them. Um, Native doctors or make uh, incantations mm -hmm. and all that. They don't go and they just keep quiet or and start. They speak it. Yes. So the same way they are speaking it, you use your word to counteract whatever mm -hmm. negative forces or negative words that are gone out, out out there. Yes. So our words, our confession also negates. It cancels mm -hmm. out negative words. Yes. So when we are making confessions, we are not just joking or what. We don't say it for saying sake. Mm -hmm. Even without knowing what you're saying or who you are directing it at, Ooh. just know that it is doing something because it carries power. And whether you like it or not, there are people that their job is day and night to, to, to pollute the environment. Mm. Their job day and night is to make incantation spells to just release demons, release negative forces in the air. So, you so the your confession is important to counter it. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Use your word to counter it. Positive words, what of God to counter the negativity around your life. Praise the Lord. And words can either justify or condemn you. So you have to be careful. The Bible says in Matthew 12, verse 75, very popular scripture. He said, I say to you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account there of the day of the You see why we need to confess positively? Please like and share as you watch so that people can join in as you can. And if you are joining us for the first time, you are welcome to Fireman from Daughters of Destiny, produced by the Central Apostle Bussola Jogelo. 
So I say to you, Matthew 12, 36 to 37, every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy word thou shalt be judged, and by thy word thou shalt be judged. You see why you have to be very careful, extremely careful of the words that proceed out of our mouth, or the word that we speak. We must not just speak foolishly. Do not just speak out of uh, uncontrolled emotions. You know, when people are, are overwhelmed, they just yeah, say, they just say a lot of things. Ah. And when they say a lot of things, you know, especially when they are angry or maybe when they are down, you know, that kind of a thing. You just begin to say so many things. You have to be careful. You have to be careful because when you speak out of emotions, you are likely to commit a very, a very, very big blunder. And so you have to be careful, and you may regret it. So it is wisdom to keep your mouth shut when you are angry or when something else you are well. It is just wisdom to keep your mouth shut at that time and let the Holy Spirit help you at such times to calm you down. It's just wisdom. Praise the Lord. And this is just called emotional intelligence. Yes. Emotional intelligence. Yes. yes. If you need to know more about that, you need to attend some. Seminars hosted by the computer of the school. Now, James 3 1 to 18 talks extensively about seminar at home. You know? James 3 verse 2 says, For we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in what with his perfect man, they will also to be to the whole body. You see? Words. So if you do not stumble in your words, you can actually control your own body. Yes. Hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what are you speaking? What words are you speaking? What words? Words are too powerful. More powerful than most of us realize. Words have power to create or to destroy. What are you speaking? Words convey spiritual power that can impact life or destroy life. Words can invoke blessings or curses. Ah, the words you speak to men, do you know what? It can either bless them or curse them. Yes. When you speak faith-filled words mm -hmm. unto people, living words, you see it in the lives of men. Mm -hmm. They are seeds that will germinate, yeah. and they will bear good fruits yes. in their lives. Yes. And come back if you speak negative words, you will see it too. Mm -hmm. If it can happen to plant, then it can happen to men. I would like to share this testimony with yeah. you. You know, when my, uh, my second son, when he was young, he was in the school, he wasn't doing well at all. He wasn't doing well. And each time the teachers would come, ah, Madam, this is your son. He's so dumb. He's so mm. slow. Mm. He's so, you know, all manner of things. Of <laughs> to cut the long story short, when God wanted to, you know, change his story, the first thing, the instruction I got was remove him from that school. Mm. We take him out of, even though I was so attached to the owner of the mm -hmm. school, I love the school, everything about it. But the first thing, the first thing that started his delivery, that set up his deliverance was me taking him out of that environment. Where, in fact, the way the teacher was, I would just be crying. So we need to do something about this, your son. is like he has an ADHD, he has a GG, you know, now manner of diagnosis, people that even go to school too. <laughs> You know, I will just be crying. Why is my own like this? At this age, he cannot spell his name. He cannot even do this. All oh, negative, negative. I and mean, I'll be depressed. When we get them, I'll beat him. Why? But the first thing I did when God started with us was to pull him out of that environment of negativity. And that was how, I don't even want to go back. Environment of negativity. But that was how everything changed. So I took him to a new school and to the glory of God today, I just thank God. I thank God. So words, words, even though he physically wasn't doing well, but the words of the people around him was not helping. It wasn't helping. You know, for some of us, words are so powerful. Words have really impacted us from God. Yeah, and for some of us, it's the opposite. You don't use your ordinary compliments. It was a long way. Mm. Encouragement to others. Yes. Maybe just so that you compliment me, somebody mm. you just compliment the person. Maybe the person has been waiting. Or oh. well, that compliment will just, just lift the person's spirits. Mm. So, as believers, and God should always be seasoned with salt. Salt. The Bible says, and deliver with grace. Yes. 
That's what the Bible told us in Colossians 4 verse 6. Our, our work is sitting in store and delivered in the way. Because you know, this world that we speak is either you are making a life, building other thoughts, or you are destroying. He said, let your speech always be gracious. Season with so, so that you may know how you ought to answer each question. Yes. What have so much influence on people? So much that it can change, just like you're talking about your son. Mm. It can change a person's yeah. life. Yes. Let's even start from where we start sharing the good news of the gospel to people. Mm. Mm. When you start preaching the word of God to people, you are already transforming their lives. Yes. If they yield themselves to that word, yes. because you are speaking the good news yes. to them. Mm. Let's start from that place. We should always use our words to build other other words. Just like we it now. Use our words to build other. Are you using your words to create or to destroy? Are you creating or destroying your marriage? Are you creating or destroying your children or your country? Because it's so common. What the words we speak over Nigeria as our nation. We need to speak positive words over our children, over our country. You want your country to be great. Speak positive words. God bless Nigeria. God bless Nigeria. You will hear that the, the, the American this is God bless America. God bless America. You should change your word and say God bless Nigeria. Mm. We're seeing things happening now because people are beginning to, to know that mm. we should speak positive words. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The other day, I was coming from somewhere and you know, See the terminal which was looking so beautifully lit in the night. Mm -hmm. It can be done. It can be done. Let's be positive words in this nation. We should use our words. Gracious words, the Bible says, they are a honeycomb, mm -hmm. sweet to the soul, to the soul. and healing to the bones. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 16, 24. Mm -hmm. Our words of kindness and love can make a huge difference in somebody's yes. life. The Bible says the soft hands are come to the mirror. Yes. But the harsh words tears of anger. All these little things, even in our daily living, the words we speak matter a lot. It matters a lot. It matters a lot. Let's be careful. Let's know what we speak. Because when you speak negative words, it's full of deadly poison. We have to be careful with what we speak. Confess the words. Confession, key to possession. Whatever you speak, you create the atmosphere. You create it. It's a spiritual force. It is a spiritual form. And I dare to tell you, positive confession is not a gift of the spirit. Mm. Mm. It is oh, a choice. It is a choice. An intention and deliberate action. It is a deliberate action. It is a choice. Mm. You, consciously, you consciously choose to speak those words, those positive words for effective living. That is it. It's not a gift of... Mm. So we must know what we are saying with the mouth, because miracles are in the mouth. Great and good. No, you're back to you to say something. You used to say something. You said, Enilom. Meaning, words spoken are like broken eggs. You know, there is no way to scoop it back into the egg. So you must be careful what you speak. You know, we have, we, yo, yes, when things happen, yes, we can seek forgiveness, you know, after in those moments. But to scoop that word back, to forget the person that you have spoken such words to, but the person to forget, thanks to the grace of God. So we have to be careful what we do. And many a times you have made this error. You have goofed in all these areas. You, know? you just speak to people anyhow. We don't know how that person feels afterwards. Mm -hmm. You know, especially in the days of social media, mm -hmm. they go to the pages, they see a lot of things. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have, 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 have committed suicide because of what people mm -hmm. say mm -hmm. to them. Yes. Yes. We have to be careful. We have to be careful yes. with that. And repeat, gracious words are important. Mm -hmm. Sweet to the soul and healing to the whole. We must, our words will be seasoned. I know there is one particular scripture that I want to read. Proverbs 25 11. Proverbs 25 11. Said, said something like, a, a, a word quickly spoken 
the word thing we spoke of is like apples of gold in settings of silver. Apples of gold in settings of silver. That means the word thing we spoke of, you know, goes to do the exact thing. When you say it, when it's fitly spoken, it does wonders in that person's life. He creates beauty out of that yes. person's life. Yes. Because can you imagine a word spoken? It's like apples of gold. Just oh. imagine apples of gold. Mm. Imagine mm. gold settings in silver, gold it and silver. It, you know, Do you know how beautiful level. it is? Yeah. So you create a beauty out of that person's life. Mm. Beautiful things. When you say that right word, ah, mm. it's a whole lot. It goes a whole lot. It goes far. Mm. So there are some things that some people have told us in the past that you are still remembering. And there are some things that you have, God has told you, that some people have spoken to your life that has shaped your life. Mm. Do you know that? Mm. Just, just try to remember things that some people, some beautiful things that some people have spoken to your life that yes. has shaped your life, yes. even up to today. Yes. So we have to be careful. Mm. It's a miracle in our mouth. Mm. So as you, as you speak and as you speak, you think of the word of God as you speak the word of God, you are actually creating a reality. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And this is one of the very, very, it, it, this, this is a very key incident to stay. Sorry to say. Or let me put it there. This, this confession to keep to possession is a very, very important thing to us showing her. Yes. Because if you want to be up there, keep speaking the word. Keep creating that environment for yourself. Keep creating it for your children, for your spouse, for your country. Watch what you say. Keep creating it. Keep saying positive things. No matter the situation, as you begin to speak and confess that word, I tell you, God has seen they are seeds of destiny and it will germinate and grow and bear that desired fruit in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, um, Salome, this is time for prayers. Can you make this our special call? Hallelujah. 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 With our hearts or with the heart of man, we believe and with our mouth, confession is made unto salvation. I want to invite you. If you're out there watching us right now and you want to make the confession to let the devil know that I, I am done with you. I am on the Lord's side. Maybe you gave your life some time ago or at any point, but you have not never confessed with your mouth. Or perhaps you have been battling with doubt, unbelief. I want you to lift up your voice now and say, Father, I thank you. Thank you for this opportunity to come before you once again. Oh Lord Jesus, I believe that you are Lord, I believe that you are God, I believe that you have the power to save and to deliver. I come to you tonight, I come to you now. Please have mercy on me, wash me with your precious blood, cleanse me from all unrighteousness, from every sin. Have mercy upon me, oh Lord, deliver me in the name of Jesus. I believe that you have the power to save me and to take me from, from darkness into your marvelous light. Therefore, I confess you, Jesus, as my Lord and as my Savior. Please come into my heart, come into my life. Come and reign and dwell as my Lord and Savior from now henceforth in the name of Jesus. I want you to declare and declare that Lord Jesus, from now on I am for you. I am in you. I am with you in the name of Jesus. Say from now on, I am a child of light. The light of God shines within me and darkness cannot comprehend anymore in the mighty name of Jesus. Say from now on, I am saved. I am delivered and I am set free from sin, from darkness and from Satan and his courts in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Jesus. Glory be to your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Congratulations. You are now born again. You are now saved. I would like you to identify with any Bible-believing church. You can also join us at Daughters of Destiny. We are 
We, we have multiple centers in Lagos and in other nations. Um, just the same channel where you, you're connected right now, do reach out to us. I will let you know how you can connect at any center worldwide. And the Lord will bless you as you do so in Jesus' name. And I would like everyone now to take this prayer, this following prayers. Let us pray and say, Lord, I thank you for your goodness. Father, I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your protection. I thank you for your love. I thank you for how far you have brought me. I thank you for your word that is alive in me. Thank you for your word that is working for me. Thank you because your word has never failed. Thank you because your word will not fail in my mouth. Glory be to your name, O Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us say, Father, forgive me for all the negative words that have ever uttered in my life in the name of Jesus. Say, O oh Lord, have mercy on me for every word of unbelief, for every word of doubt, for every negative word, every word that is contrary to your will, to your word for me. Have mercy upon me, O oh Lord. Every word I utter from a place of discouragement, every word I utter from a place of, of despair, I bring repentance by the blood of Jesus Christ. O oh Lord Jesus, have mercy upon me. Wash me, O oh Lord. Punch me, O oh Lord, with the blood of Jesus. Let such words be cancelled by the blood of Jesus. Let every of those words now be cancelled by the blood of Jesus. I don't know the area where you have confessed negatively in the past. I want you to identify them one by one. Over my children, I cancel every negative word by the blood of Jesus. Over the work of my hand, concerning my health, concerning my marriage, concerning my relationships, concerning my destiny in every area of my life. Let the blood of Jesus locate and cancel, negate every spoken word by me in the name of Jesus. And in that line, you are also going to pray every contrary word from the pit of hell, from any evil altar, from any evil coven, any evil spoken word, any contrary word that is operating in my life, that is manifesting in me, that is working in my life, in my family, in my business, the lives of my children, in my marriage, right now be cancelled by the blood of Jesus. Be cancelled by the blood of Jesus. And we are still praying. Say, oh Lord, my Father, I declare and declare that every word that comes out of my mouth in the name of Jesus shall be positive words. There shall be words of fulfillment. There shall be words of praise. There shall be words that edify. There shall be words that glorify in the mighty name of Jesus. And we are also going to pray that, oh Lord, I decree and declare, oh my Father, that your word, I receive strength, I receive power in the name of Jesus. Your word empowers me. Oh, my word, the words that come out of my mouth, oh Lord, is anointed. My lip is anointed to decree your word in the name of Jesus. Anoint my lips, anoint my tongue, oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Jesus, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Let's look at the voice and pray and say, Lord, that Lord. I declare the potency of your word over my life in the name of Jesus. Our Father, I thank you because your word is protecting my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's say, Lord, thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord.
into my confession. Lord, I confess. I confess. I go to higher ranks spiritually, financially, emotionally, economically. In the name of Jesus, I have a mouth for my shoes. My faith to God that will take me to higher ranks. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you tonight. For in Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. And you say, My world shall build all that structure. By my words, life shall be transformed. Glorious be the name of Jesus. Ah, Lord, my words shall be other My words shall be filled with Hey, my words shall be filled with Hey, in the mighty name of Jesus. By my words, life shall be transformed. In the name of Jesus. Ah, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. And we pray and say, Father, I will not represent you by my words. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I will not represent you by my words. In the name of Jesus. I will be a good ambassador by my words. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. And we pray and say, I will always so move to your destiny so by my words in Jesus' name. I will always so move to your destiny by my words in the name of Jesus. I will not lose my life. I will not lose my purpose to the enemy through my words in the name of Jesus. My children will not lose their life. My husband will not lose his life and their purpose to the enemy through their words in the name of Jesus. I lift up every daughter of destiny who will not lose our life and our purposes to the enemy through our words in the name of Jesus. Ah, Father, we thank you. Let's prophesy. I prophesy that my speech will always be gracious and seeking so as to shine light in my world in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. God, we bless your name. We worship you. We give all the glory. Thank you. Hallelujah. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you, viewers. Thank you for logging in this evening. I hope you will be blessed. And I, because I am so blessed. Yes, Father, too. we thank you and we pray for you. Yes. That even as you have joined today, mm -hmm. even as you have listened, that this word that will not go against you in the last day. In the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. We pray, Lord, yeah, that everything you have prepared to do now will make a positive impact in your lives. In Jesus' name, we can pray that. And so, Salome, what do you have to tell the people? I just want to appreciate you for staying tuned and for, for joining us every evening or every Saturday. We pray that the Lord will bless you with increase. We also want to encourage you to send in your questions, your feedbacks, your testimonies. We'd love to hear from you and we'd love to know how to serve you more. And the Lord will continue to honor you as you honor his word and his work in our hands in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As you keep loving on to fire brand, testimony yes. shall abound Amen. in your life. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. I just want to leave this word with you. Mm. And keep addressing what you are supposed to address. Mm. Because what you do not address, mm. what you cannot address, cannot be arrested. So keep addressing, keep speaking mm. that positive word. There is a miracle in your heart. Yes. Thank you, Father. I know we have a Bible to put on the menu for this program. You see, thank you. Next week will be here at 8 p.m. We are always here every Saturday. For another beautiful Cheers. Bye for now.